Hey guys, Ken Ross here and I'm with Nate Meyer and Alex Clef of Jackson Maximus. This is the Customer Spotlight. How you doing today, Nate? Hey, I'm great, Ken. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you and Al um, hosting me today and uh, real pleasure to be here. Well, I'm, I'm excited myself <laughs> to get to know who Nate is. Met you out in the lobby here. Tell us a little bit of your background. Yeah, sure. Well, I, um, I grew up in Washington, D.C., so I'm a D.C. guy. Uh, moved to LA as an adult to work uh, at Disney Corporation. I thought that was wow. a good reason. I got my MBA at UCLA, so oh, you, nice. can, oh. you can call me an LA guy. Wow. But now that I'm moving to Florida, of course, I don't like to say I'm from Los Angeles. <laughs> you uh, touch both coasts. So I'd rather like, say I'm from cool. DC. Where'd you get your undergrad? Uh, I went to University of Virginia. Okay. So I like to say I'm the best day. Uh, public school can provide. And interestingly, my <laughs> high school was T.C. Williams, if you remember Denzel yeah, Washington. Yeah, yeah. Remember the yeah. Since recently renamed wow. Alexandria High School, this Noah Lyles actually is a graduate of there and he's wow. breaking records in the track and field cool. area. So yeah, I've got an interesting, you could say public school uh, uh, upbringing. But as I moved to uh, Florida, um, I'm taking a new job at HIG Capital that actually stands for Harvard Investment Group. So there are a lot of Ivy League guys floating around there, but I um, am in private equity. So we buy and sell companies. Before that, I was with another firm that's LA based. Okay. Uh, and I love what I do because I go in and help run the company. So I sit on the boards, I wow. work with the CEOs and CFOs. And I've worked on multi-billion dollar, 20,000 person global companies. I've traveled the world wow. for 20 years. I've also been a CFO if I need to be, uh, <laughs> including the Detroit Pistons. That's, that's an interesting what? one. People wow. we, we bought the Detroit Pistons. I was on the board <laughs> uh, with Joe Dumars and wow. others. I um, was CFO for a period of time, and, but believe it or not, that might have been the most boring job I've had because these other businesses can be quite complex right. and there's a lot of challenges, just a lot of fun. Wow, so you got like all the bases covered there. I'm from the Midwest, I'm like, how do I fit into this equation here at this yeah. point? But yeah, that's really awesome to, to hear your background and uh, what it is that you do um, currently, yeah, and so. if you don't mind me saying, I think all this experience I've had around the world, I was mentioning to you before yeah. we jumped on that I've lived in many different places. You know, I've worked in 50 countries, I've been to 100 countries, I've worked across industries. I like to say I'm industry agnostic. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> one of the yeah. uh, complicated industries I'll say is manufacturing industrial because that's yes. a whole other skill set. Mm -hmm. But what, the, what that means for me is I'm very humble. Like I've seen enough to know I don't mm -hmm. know anything or I can sit in China for 10 years yes. and I'm not going to know anything about China. So wow. uh, I, I appreciate the diversity of experience. I think it helps me solve each company's problems in a unique way. I'm not just coming at things with one approach. Just hearing what you have to say about being humble and, and knowing that there's always a space to learn is yep. something I'm definitely about. I, yep. I teach my audience if, on my channel, not this one, about different things that are happening in yep. the industry. And that, so it's constantly changing. And I think you've really highlighted on that. Something I think people can admire from somebody who's been around a lot of different places. Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying that. I, I agree. I think we all have room to grow and improve. Yeah. Um, folks that say otherwise, I maybe get nervous about. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm actually 52 years old. I don't mind sharing, but I think, you know, I have a lot of energy, a lot of gas in the tank. I feel like I'm at the prime of my career, but I'm continuously trying to uh, improve myself and the companies around me and I, yeah. I, I love mentoring others and uh, I especially take a lot of satisfaction in, in uh, some of the results I can achieve, you know, yeah. working with other people on, you know, what's right for their company or their situation. Yeah. Well, and you told me out in the hallway here, you were in Dallas during the pandemic yeah. and you learned how to, how to do some, some clay shooting Oh too. yeah. So, so definitely have Room so just like uh, here when I moved to Miami, I got my boating license. I figured when in Miami. <laughs> and so I'm U.S. Yeah. Coast Guard certified. I joined a boat wow. club. Maybe I'll have a boat, you know, when in Miami. But in Dallas, especially in COVID, everybody was locked indoors. The one thing outdoors was a 
533-acre Dallas Gun Club facility. I became a member and got professionally trained on how to shoot. And they had skeet and trap. And uh, shooting clay is fun. They call it golf with a gun. You know, yeah. every <laughs> hole is different. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's nice. You I know, like I do that. have three kids. Oh, They're adults that. now, 19, 20, 21, you know, okay. one after the other. They, they, they actually yeah. would come out and visit me, and we'd shoot three days in a row. So it was wow. a lot of fun. And, um, wow. And uh, so I have a big appreciation for that as a sport. The most fun thing you can do is something called Halise, where if I could describe it for a minute, if you think of like a baseball field with mm -hmm. a fence, mm -hmm. There are three hidden, you know, traps in the ground where plastic targets will come up and they can go in any direction. Wow. And the idea is you have to shoot them before they go over the fence. Wow. Okay. And you get 25 shots and you get scored and there are tournaments. And actually that gun club hosted the national championships every year. Mm -hmm. And that is a lot of fun. That, I mean, that, 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 that can be a lot of, that can be Absolutely. something you get into. Wow, this is I can't even I can't even tell you where I thought this conversation was gonna go, but <laughs> I, I could I could probably spend all day talking to you about different things, uh, especially something like you said, boating is something I'm interested in yeah. being here in South Florida. Well, I'll tell something. you my experience in boating, like it it's harder than it looks. I know a lot about <laughs> boating safety and and uh, you know piloting a boat, but I I wouldn't want to be uh, in charge of anything. Too big, like suddenly 34 feet seems huge. Yes. But uh, beyond that, yeah, let somebody else um, let somebody else drive. I also played basketball, believe it or not. I mean, so I did everything on, but the I football. I played on team. Disney's championship team. I saved the 97 really? plaque because no one is going to believe it. <laughs> um, but I enjoy soccer. You know, that's more size appropriate for me. Right. And I did join a team here in Miami. I used to play okay. a lot in LA. And uh, I think if you can keep up with team sports until you get injured, it's it's a good thing. Even though I'm the oldest guy on the team, yeah. I don't want to give up uh, on that yet. I don't want to like, give up fun. on the dream. Yeah, team no, sports cool. are fun. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. My well, mom is a, a tennis player, and she's, oh, great. Yeah, she's in her 60s. And uh, there's a league out in Houston um, that actually competes the older ladies with the younger ones. Yeah. And she won last week in the, in the contest, the tournament that they did, against these 20-year-old girls. Yeah. And she, was, she called me immediately. Yeah, she was that's, like, Guess that's what? awesome. I beat these young girls. And so I don't think age has anything to do with it. It's fun to have a sport you yeah. can play through your, your whole life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, you also told me out in the hallway a little bit about when you were uh, coming up here and someone commented on your appearance. Yeah. I really think it's exceptional, regardless Thank of what you. they may say in the hall, <laughs> what they said in the yeah. hallway or out on the, on the street there. Tell us why that your your appearance, your your professional look is important to you and what well, it is. Well, thanks. Yeah. So I have grown to appreciate that uh, how you look matters. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I, uh, again, mentioned I'm from L.A. I used to have somebody uh, uh, be responsible for my look mm -hmm. in, in Los Angeles. And moving here to Miami, I know that I'll never be an expert. You know, it's like changing your own oil on your car. You can do that, but why if you don't need to? Yeah. So I love to just be able to feel good about myself. And so, you know, the way I look is, is super important. And I was... Uh, really fortunate I guess to have picked a place just a couple blocks away from here you know I'd heard good things about uh, Jackson Maximus mm -hmm. some of my colleagues at HIG Capital are also clients here okay um, and so uh, I had the luck I guess to meet the owner early on Christian and he was super helpful and started getting me going on you know the next chapter I think uh, all of us maybe have had some wardrobe challenges uh, during COVID to even need to show up at the office as our body shape changed. Um, so it's really nice um, to be able to have the confidence you need, uh, I think, in the workplace and, and, and people notice. Um, I used to think it was, no, it's all about the person, but not necessarily. And in fact, Recently, I spoke at a leadership conference in Lake Tahoe. Al and I were talking, and I was really keen to get 
get on my gear and make sure I was looking my best, you know, presenting in front of, you know, hundreds of my colleagues. I think uh, it's yeah. important. Yeah, I think the investment really speaks for itself, like you said, yeah. uh, because one could always think, well, I'm going to be able to perform. So yeah. are a lot of other folks, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What separates a professional team from an amateur team is the uniform, right? Yeah. And you're saying, and, I can definitely see And that. it's not just how much you spend, it's um, what you're spending it on. So I have on my own made a lot of mistakes where I would buy something thinking, oh, if I'm paying a lot, of course I'm going to wear this, of course I'll look good. <laughs> right. But I think the personalized attention and just getting, again, an expert to weigh in on what's right for you um, it is important and I'll, and I'll never again be an expert in terms of what <laughs> colors look good on me or for a guy my stature what's going to look best I'd rather you know trust in the experts and um, it's a real uh, like you said investment I think uh, people, someone told me once never underspend on mattresses and shoes but I think I'd extend the sh shoes definitely yeah. but I'd extend that to the uh, to the wardrobe Yes, definitely something to rely heavily on a, on an expert to invest in because then you just don't you don't have to worry about it. You put it yeah. on and you're just like it's a superhero. You yeah. feel like I don't there's there's no no challenge today that I can't face exactly. by doing that. And and that's that's what I really admire about what you're saying yeah. and and what Jackson has to offer here. So yeah. that's, that's and I've, that's great. I've I went years maybe many of us have where mm -hmm. you don't wear not just half the stuff in your closet, maybe 80%. You right. wind up reaching for the same stuff. You're just mm -hmm. more comfortable. You know certain clothes don't fit you that well. Right. So you tell yourself, oh, well, on a bad day, maybe I'll pick that up. But why? Why do you need to have a bad day? You know, every day <laughs> can be a good day. So. so what you say is important, but how you walk into a room is just equally, if not more important. Mm -hmm. So if you have items that you know are going to fit you well and you know that you feel like yep. a superhuman, uh, then why not ha amplify that? To take the stuff that you don't, that you don't wear yeah. uh, all year long and get stuff that you're excited about wearing. Yeah, and I, I do like to also, um, besides the basics, branch off into more colorful things. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you a story if you don't mind. One yeah. of the biggest deals right. I did at my last firm is we bought the Global Diabetes Division from Johnson & Johnson. Really? So. 20 million patients, 90 countries. Wow. Um, certainly a business you don't want to screw up and you want to do right. do what's right for the business. Um, the biggest carve out, it's a carve out because you're buying a big division from a large you know, Fortune 50 company. Mm -hmm. And I was in charge of that whole carve out and I had to give a town hall. Like I mentioned in Inverness, Scotland, I took a, right. a whiskey tour. I was in Inverness because believe it or not, all the diabetes test strips that yeah. you'll find here in CVS Pharmacy are made in Inverness. Wow. Like over five billion strips a year. So I was in there, I gave a town hall, three town halls to over 2,000 people, as well as I gave a global town hall. And one of the things uh, everybody remembers, and I did this on purpose, is I wore some red pants. Yeah. <laughs> with some coral pants, and everybody remembers the red pants. And then as I went through that, whole experience. I, I remember going out to Philippines and everybody wore red pants because they remembered the, oh, wow. they remembered cool. what I was wearing. Wow. So it's a lot of fun, especially when you're up in front of people. It, 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 again, it's going to matter how you look and mm -hmm. uh, you need to pay attention. Especially in, in this case, if you have a position of influence, it's important that people see you like that, not just you know any other blue suit or yeah. have something that's unique and attention grabbing, but also uh, leaves them with a certain impression. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, ideally, I mean, people are asking you, mm -hmm. uh, what are you wearing? Where did you get that suit? And in fact, I, I mentioned to you guys just in the couple short blocks walking over here, mm -hmm. uh, I got a few different compliments from people on my suit. Yeah. Uh, and I wish I could tell them more. They were asking me some <laughs> detailed questions, but again, maybe I'll have to pay. I know, Al, you're super thoughtful about where does everything come from, all the attention to detail, so I need to do a better job at uh, getting up to speed so I could be a better spokesperson <laughs> for your stuff, maybe. But for um, me, it's all in people detail. notice the quality, mm -hmm. um, and that's impressive. So I, I well, like that. Look, like, I don't have something like that. And it makes them think about their own personal wardrobe. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right.
Yeah. It's, it's good to see because it's the same reaction that I've had ever since I've come here, mm -hmm. is that you see the exceptional value that you have in this investment here, mm -hmm. that you can't just come in here and think, they're doing it just the same as everybody else. They're, they're yeah. definitely investing in the individual, yep. in yourself, and in myself. We're, we're yep. two different people well, from different worlds. I love worlds. the whole concept. I mean, I uh, used to go to Jay Wolf, not that it matters, in Los Angeles. Yeah. He was on Melrose and Robertson. Okay. Um, a great couple. But th first of all, they did men and women. And then second of all, it wasn't this whole experience. So um, this place is just a, a, a great sort of one-stop shop for mm -hmm. whatever you need. I mean, it was fun. I could get my teeth whitened. I can get a haircut. I can um, grab some whiskey. I can manicure. do my tailoring here, yeah. manicure. Yeah. So I just like the whole uh, concept and atmosphere. It's really welcoming. It makes you, you know, I did sign up for a membership. I thought it was a great value and uh, uh, just a wonderful welcome to Miami. Yeah. So besides this place and boating and work, um, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out when you're ready for boating i can introduce you to a client of ours that works with that specifically yeah connor yeah that's yeah. what i was trying to come up with before connor yeah, yeah. does the yachting and he was yeah, I mean, yeah. he's telling me a lot about that mm -hmm. uh and you can check that out on the channel too but sure yeah. uh, do you have any other things you'd like to share uh appreciate the journey i've been out in on life you guys seem to have a really interesting background too and uh like I said, you know, I'm not done yet. I'm really looking forward to uh, enjoying Miami. I do want to say, having lived in many different places um, and traveled, at, it seems like everywhere, um, I uh, am really enjoying Miami. Yes. So uh, there's many um, great things about being here. So I'm, I'm really uh, happy to be here. I don't miss Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've heard that or, or, or Dallas, I okay. tried that. I even tried uh, Scottsdale. I had a place there. Oh, okay. So the, the theme is somewhere warm. Yeah, right. I had a, I did have a place in Upper Valley, New Hampshire. Um, if anybody's paying attention, these are all you know tax free on the states, <laughs> just by the way. Um, but uh, okay. way too cold. So no. I think I am at okay. a stage in my life, unless mm -hmm. I'm skiing. You want to uh, be I want to be in a warm place. And what? people say, oh, Miami heat the summer, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the hotter the better. Like, I'm not complaining. I'm walking uh, walking across the bridge and going to the beach. So Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I don't have yeah. a problem sweating yeah. too much. I think yeah. that the heat's fine. Mm -hmm. And what, you did mention all these places. You didn't mention one place that I know a lot of folks in Miami talk about, which is New York. They come yeah. from New York down to here. Yeah. Um, but there's a reason for that. Uh, yeah. Just that thought that this is a good place to be because you see so many different types of people. It's mm -hmm. they call it a baby New York for a reason. You meet all different types of exceptional folks, mm -hmm. and that is not without exception for you. You say you're 52. I I can't tell it, yeah. um, and I certainly do appreciate you taking the time today and spending some time letting us know how how it is that you came to to be here, what your experience is like, the the fact that you know we can all come into this place and meet each other is mm -hmm. is something that's really awesome. Well, and thank you, Ken. It's a real pleasure meeting you today. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, we can get to know each other better. And you know, thanks Al for suggesting us get getting together. Looking forward to the uh, trunk show yeah, yes. trunk, uh, trunk tomorrow shows. and uh, other events I, in the future. I, yeah, trunk show uh, is tomorrow, so expect some video content <laughs> uh, from from Dorme Escobar and our own. Uh, this has been Customer Spotlight with Jackson Maximus, Nate Meyer, Ken Ross. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. See you next time. <laughs>